Hello and welcome to WePC Benchmarks. Today I'm going through the best settings for Deathloop. The game has just come out and has some issues of drop frames and stuttering. This is being investigated by the developers, but for now, it seems to be dependent on your setup if you get the issue. On my test bench, I didn't have much obvious stuttering, just some dips here and there, especially when the pop-ups show up on the screen. So, for this test, I used the GTX 1050 Ti and running the game on the Ultra preset at first to get a baseline performance. And when running through it, as you can see, we get an average of 24 to 25 FPS. The GPU I used is just below the minimum requirement for the game, so it is to be expected to not be running that great. But to be fair, it's not the worst performance ever, and it is manageable, but it can always be improved. So I'll take you through the best settings for the game. I went through each setting one by one and compared the performance and quality to pick the settings that best suit to the game. We start with the video settings, and here we're using 1080p at full screen, with gamma and brightness set to your own personal screen. The field of view is set to personal preference, which mine is about 90 to 95. Reflex and latency are turned off, as they can have an impact on performance, and the latency isn't actually terrible anyway. V-Sync is turned off, as well as upscaling, as for now I will show you the performance without FSR, but we'll have a look at the end to see how it affects it. The last option here is the FPS limiter, and this can't be turned off with V-Sync off. So I set it to the highest of 120. However, if your game is stuttering and is above one of the averages, you could set it to that to try to improve the performance. Moving on to the advanced tab, here we set the texture details to high, model details to medium, shadow details to very low, as this gains a big increase in FPS without actually looking that different. Then we have water details set to medium, terrain details we set to higher, and decal set to medium. Ambient occlusion is now the next option, and it has four settings with the Fidelity FX Cacao balance being the best option. Sun shadows cannot be changed unless you have a GPU capable of ray tracing, and keeping it simple is the best option anyway. Then is post-process anti-aliasing, and set that to low. We then have the final few options, which are more focused on camera effects. First we have motion blur, and this is turned off. Then is bloom, which I turn off as it can make light sources seem way too bright. Next is the depth of field, which can make things blurry and seem out of focus, and I turn that off. The last two options are lens flare and light shafts, which are more visual effects that simulate lens effects and light shafts shining down. There's not much performance change, so I turn off lens flare, but do keep the shafts on. Those are all the settings you need to help improve your performance. And as you can see, it has increased our FPS to an average of 36 FPS, which is an increase of 12 FPS from Ultra, so about a 50% increase. And as you can see, the game still looks good, and even has higher lows, meaning any stuttering or drops aren't as aggressive, and don't interfere with your gameplay. Here is also a snippet of the game using Ultra Quality FSR which does make the game's textures look very smeared. And so it is a good option only to get the most performance. And I wouldn't recommend much lower than ultra quality anyway. But as you can see, it does increase the average frame rate to 46, which is nearly 90% increase on our original frame rate. So this can be a good option if you really need it. So there you have it, the best settings for Deathloop, either a 50% increase with custom and no FSR, or nearly 90% with FSR on ultra quality. Hopefully this has been helpful to you, and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.